The world of work is changing, but why is it changing? How is it changing? And what should you and your organization do about it? Hi, my name is Jacob Morgan. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and futurist. And on this show, I'm gonna help answer all of these questions. Join me as I go inside some of the world's most forward-thinking companies to tour their offices and interview their executives and employees. Welcome to the future of work. The future of work impacts all sorts of organizations regardless of industry and regardless of geography. That also means companies in the music space. So to find out what Pandora thinks about the future of work, I've asked to speak with their chief human resource officer, some of their employees, and to get a tour of their offices. For those of you not familiar with Pandora, they are internet radio providers with 80 million listeners today. So let's go inside, take a look at their offices, and find out what they think about the future of work. So I'm here with Jeff Ho, who's the art director over at Pandora. He's gonna give us a tour of their offices and let us know what went into the thinking behind creating this awesome space. Jeff, thank Hi. you very much. Thanks, nice to meet you, Jacob. Um, so welcome to Pandora. So here's our reception. Uh, you know, usually our logos isn't obstructed by rainbow banners, but this month we're celebrating uh, LGBTQ and gay pride. So uh, here we are in our big open space. So in building out the space, we've, you know, really, uh, in working conjunction with uh, the architects who have sort of an underlying theme around the places that you listen to music. But what really makes us Pandora and what we really love to highlight is this kind of music geeky culture that we love all aspects of music. The way that I like to think about building out the space is that I build out small themes. So in this case, we've like taken, uh, taken color as, as a, a little highlight. So on the other side of this wall is the yellow submarine. And then uh, in the way that we've named, used a naming convention to build out, to build, build out these uh, conference rooms is around the artists. Mm -hmm. So because this is a pair of conference rooms over here, we've named them Hall, Hall of Notes. And then on this side, we have the porch. And inside the porch is Preservation Hall Jazz Band. So we wanted to highlight these really iconographic yeah. artists. How'd you get involved in this? I mean, for people that are interested in like design, I mean, did you go to school to study? I did, I went to school to study graphic design, but you know, when, when you go to school for graphic design, it's mostly around print-based or yeah. packaging or branding, right? So. It's really fascinating that in my role at Pandora, when we started, when I started, it was a, a lot smaller. So there were design aspects like building out just the conference room naming that the facilities guys just came over and asked, could I do, you know, the graphics treatments for the names just so people can see yeah, that so they're it different. Small and started from really, there. really small, and then it built out into building out the graphic language for all of our offices. Now you're doing the whole wall, the yeah. whole building. That's amazing. Yeah, so these things really help to tie it all together as you know, really proprietary yeah. and really us. What are these little blue things here up at the ceiling? They're little baffles so that it kind of baffles the noise off of the oh, concrete okay. walking around. This is our, one of our newest backstage spaces. It's all the different work styles, right? Mm -hmm. That individuals like to work by themselves in a, in a corner, in, like by a window, that they don't want to necessarily feel like they're locked down to their desk, but that they have opportunities in the different ways and in, in changing it up what suits them. So this is our, our newest floor. So I, th I think that we're still finding our way around the space and um, utilizing the space. Like it's, it's really interesting as we build it out because we have our intention around um, the way that a space should be utilized, but then it's really interesting then to actually live in it yeah. and see how that plays out. What about like these types of spaces where you guys yeah. have snacks and sort of a kitchen environment? Uh, was there a lot of thought behind that sort of stuff as well? I think that it, it's, that was an, an architectural decision um, from the architect's side, but I think what it ends up being is a nice thoroughfare, mm -hmm. that the office feels really alive and yeah. really busy. People walking around. Yeah. yeah. I like it. You know, we wanted to play up a little bit of the rock aspect. And uh, so this wall is all about drum noises. So we made sure we included cowbell, thump, bass, gack, like all the different like ways of, you know, uh, saying. I like the cowbell. That's the most important one that you got in there. Yeah, right. More cowbell. I think we included more cowbell as well. Yep. 
more cowbell. <laughs> and this is the wrap group. So, so these, including, you can reserve your... Uh... Yeah, yeah, from here or it also um, is queued up when you uh, secure it on Outlook. And oh, it pops up in here? Yeah, it pops up over here. That, so it's nice, people, when they taken. need to have meetings, they can, uh, depending on how many people they have, they can get one of these little rooms together. Right, right. And then this wall is the most common words used in pop song titles. So instead of just doing a list of the words, we thought that by creating a overall kind of texture with, with the words was kind of the most interesting. That, so then we built it into a crossword puzzle. So, you know, some people might say, oh, you know, what's the point of doing stuff like yeah. this? Do you think this adds a lot to the employee experience? And Absolutely. Like, we are so music-centered um, at our core. Why not build our environments to kind of really reflect that? Yeah. yeah. Even though it's as simple as, like, literally the writing on the wall, yeah. it still adds that element to it. Yeah. And that's, that's our environment. What are yeah. these things? Uh, these, oh, this was from our hackathon. Um, one of the so either the teams from the hackathon can either work on something very specific to uh, Pandora, or they can do something completely outside. Yeah. And one of the teams did this like Oculus Rift like drive driving game. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's awesome. And, and it seems like there's a lot of flexibility, right? I mean, people yeah. work in different spaces. Some people show up at different hours. Yeah. So it's kind of like a. Yeah, it's a mutual respect thing. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's really nice that Pandora allows you to really take care of your own life, and you're also responsible for your work. So mm -hmm. it's really it's it's really nice that Pandora really believes in that work-life balance. So I guess this is what the space looks like before you guys get your design hands on it. Yeah, yeah, it's very. And this is probably yeah. what most people think of as kind of exactly. a traditional office. Right, right. How long does it take? to transform something like this into something like we saw? I'm, I'm gonna kind of stab in the dark here, but I, I think that the projects tend to be about six months from start to finish. That That's from it? the initial, yeah, initial inception of like, okay, we have the floor secured, uh, giving the uh, architects the go ahead on yeah. designing it all out. It's, it's becoming faster and faster only because we've worked with them quite a bit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what was the thinking behind the architects brought that up? You know, like, yeah. you know, it's it's such a big uh, build out that, you know, we and we were brought into the process of six, kind of late in the game. They're like, oh, we should we should task design to help us with some of these wall graphics, and then you see what happened on seven. It's like we've been brought into the process earlier and earlier yeah. as we build it out, and it just becomes more and more successful, like across the board. It's like, but this was. I have to give it up to the architects on that one. They, they did something really beautiful and really nice. Yeah, it's very creative. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking time to Thanks, show us Jacob. around. You guys have yeah. a beautiful space. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. So who are you and what do you do over at Pandora? Hi, I'm Kristen Robinson and I lead human resources at Pandora. So that's an, an exciting role because uh, it seems like HR is changing quite a bit. Um, how do you think HR is changing? Um, you know, it's interesting because a few years back we were always talking about how HR ha needs to be a strategic business partner, yeah. you know, really focused on the business, the business, and the business. And while that's still the case, it's all about the success of the business, I think HR now is leading the charge because it's really all about people and people's success. And if yeah. individuals are successful, then the business is successful. So, you know, I think for me, I've shifted a lot because I didn't start in this profession. Where did you start in? I was in finance and accounting. Wow. I was a CPA, which is kind of rare for yeah, HR How did you go people. from CPA to HR? You know, I was, I was always doing the extracurriculars related mm -hmm. to people things, either recruiting for my firm uh. or for my colleges. Um, volunteering for that task force about how to make the work environment better. Yeah. I thought, why not get paid for yeah. this, you know, <laughs> instead of having it be yeah. extracurricular. So yeah, so starting with the business, you know, that was easy for me, but I think over time, just because the employees, people are so critical. Yeah. I'm much more now focused on um, employee and employee success, which again, in turn, you sure. know, translates into business success. So when do you think that happened? Because it feels like over the last 10, 20 years, or even, even before that, 
there was never a focus on employee engagement and happiness and well-being. It was sort of like, show up, just do your job, don't cause any problems and just leave. And now all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, health and wellness, employee engagement, happiness. Yeah. Why do you think this conversation has shifted? Yeah, I, I think two things have caused that. First is sheer demographics in the world. There are not enough people in the world, qualified, knowledgeable people, to do the things that companies and now even governments want to do. Mm. You know, innovation is happening so quickly, roadmaps, you know, just cannot be satisfied, and yeah. so there aren't enough people. So we're in that proverbial war for talent, and when you need to attract and retain talent, all of a sudden you shift from being a little more sort of solely business focused to being a little more people centered. Yeah. So I think that's one shift. The other thing that I think has um, caused that is just generational differences. You know, millennials, it's a big topic these days. Oh, yeah. Millennials in the world. I am a millennial. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think different things are important to people in that generation. And so to be able to respond to those needs, it's been important for companies to shift kind of the things that they're doing and that they're focused on. I always like to say we have to shift from creating a place where we assume people need to be there to creating an environment where people actually want totally. to show up. Totally, totally. Because, you know, there's not this loyalty, there's not the same yeah. kind of pact between a company and an employee anymore. And so people were, will vote with their feet. So do you think that in the future we'll, we're still going to have a lot of full-time employees or everyone's going to be a contractor and a freelancer? Because like you said, it's very hard to retain talent. So what do you think that's going to look like in the future? Yeah, you know, some people do think, yeah. and there was a book decades ago of this transition to more free agents. And I actually don't think that's going to happen because, again, the scarcity of talent. Companies are going to want to hold on yeah. to the talent that they have. Having said that, I actually think a trend is going to be that work is not going to be so job yeah. defined and that people will just bring their skills, their know-how, you know, what they love to do, what they do best to the work that needs to be done. And companies will figure out a way, you know, to tap into that talent more. And so it's it's less about the structure of a job and more about what a person can bring to the table. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What role do you think managers leaders or executives play within organizations today or going in the future? More and more when the competitive advantage you have is not about assets, it's yeah. not about you know inventory, it's not even about you know innovation in a product because that can be replicated pretty quickly, especially if it's software in nature. It is about the people and the, yeah. that resource that you have. So um, at Pandora, we are really trying to develop humanistic leaders. And, you know, humanistic is kind of a lofty word. <laughs> uh, all it means is people-centered. Yeah. You know, people who are caring about people. People, leaders who um, are in service to people and helping them be successful. Mm. And so I think that leaders today and in the future have to care about the business success and people's personal success. And actually, we talk a lot about that um, at Pandora. What role do you think corporate culture plays in all this? I think it's huge. I think it's huge. People spend so much time at work, yeah. you know, and um, it's interesting. I think one of the meta trends happening in the world is the blurring of boundaries. People are blending, you know, work and family. People are blending work and learning, even if it's outside of their profession. Really? Yeah. People are blurring work and a contribution to community. You know, we have a really strong giving back program. Mm -hmm. We actually allow employees to take 40 hours of paid volunteer time off wow. every year. Um, we have a lot of activities that are connected to the community of Pandora. So this notion of blurring work with personal interests I think is really prevalent and if your culture supports that, um, you're just going to have employees who can live like sure. more whole, actually fulfilled lives. Yeah. So how do you create that kind of a corporate culture? Well, I mean, I think it starts with the leaders, right, and what they care about. It it's includes the environment, you know, yeah. people 
Um, can people find different places to socialize, collaborate? Like this little space we're in? Yeah, definitely. Or pe places where people can sort of get away from it all, even if it's here, but they can sort of be alone to do some thinking yeah. time. I actually think there's a blurring of the physical boundaries. You know, I walk around Oakland, this neighborhood, and I see our employees over at the coffee shop, you know, really? with their headphones on, you know, huh. working on their computer or meeting over lunch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it just continues to be blurred, but it, I think it's the company, uh, the company needs to create sure. the space that allows flexibility for people to um, be kind of who they are. I mean, every employee has their unique needs. We can't possibly figure out, yeah. you know, what every single person wants. So I think the, a culture of turning it over to employees, sure. right? Letting them decide. If you had to think of a word or phrase that sums up the future of work, what word or phrase pops into your mind? Wow, that's a great question. Personalized. Hmm. So who are you and what do you do at Pandora? Hi, my name is Myra Benjamin and I am the Director of Engineering at Pandora. So have you seen the workforce or the workspace, the world of work shift at all during the course of your career? Yeah, uh, now there's more diversity, mm -hmm. uh, at least here at Pandora there is. I can't say for the rest of te the tech field, but sure. uh, there's also more consideration for people's lifestyles. Uh, we can't all be workaholics. Yeah. We all have families, we all have hobbies, we all have things we, we want to do in our lives. And uh, I think that work is starting, at least companies are starting to recognize that and help us integrate those two pieces into our work lives. Sure. And I think it's probably the best thing that most companies can do to enhance your career or your experience working there. So it used to not be like that in the past, it sounds like. Not at all. <laughs> I have yeah. so many stories around that. What advice would you give to an employee that's trying to stay relevant in this changing world of work that we're seeing? Uh, definitely, you've got to have technology in your bag of tricks. There's no way that you're going to run away from that. Yeah. And it, as it much as we mean, want to, yeah, we can't run away. Yeah, there's, it doesn't mean that you have to be a programmer. Yeah. It just means that you've got to be aware. You want to use the appropriate tools for your job. You want to be trained and you want to be really well versed in them. I'm Marco Suarez and I curate and program the Latin music here. So over the course of your career, how have you seen the world of work change? Yeah. Uh, well, like I mentioned, I come out of music retail, you know, and that is, you know, there's been a, a sea change as far as how we yeah. all consume music and as well as independent radio, you know, terrestrial radio is sort of losing ground to, to streaming and to, to internet radio. Um, so in a sense, it's, you know, accessing music, it's easier than ever, but it's, it's overwhelming, I think, you know, yeah. um, for, for the average listener to sort of navigate. Um, which I think is why, you know, coming back to curating and sort of what we do at Pandora, like it's helpful to have someone guide you a little bit and, and yeah. sort of fuel discovery and maybe help people uh, find music that they otherwise wouldn't have uh, a means to discover. You know, sure. you, it's a lot more difficult to go to a record store because there's fewer of yeah. them. <laughs> um, fewer if you can think of any actually. I don't even yeah. know many around here. Well here in the Bay, you know, we still we're yeah. holding on strong. We're <laughs> got a couple. Yeah. But um, I mean definitely just the, the shift in how we consume music, because you know I've always sort of been involved in if it's radio or retail, it's like how people consume music. And now what I'm doing is sort of an extension of that, yeah. but sort of on this huge, huge scale. What about as far as how work gets done, you know, yeah. management structures, office styles. Have you seen any changes in that during the course of your career? Um, well, you know, it's interesting. This is sort of my first uh, foray into sort of tech industry and sort of corporate work. So for me, everything is new. But, you know, I've been here three years. Um, I mean, I think something at least, you know, here that I see occurring is sort of a uh, a willingness to, to let people work to their strengths and to sort of be themselves, you know, especially within the creative side of things. Yeah. Um, I see, you know, additional value being put on creativity and sort of the different ways that that manifests in, in, in different disciplines and, and different um, sort of departments, if, I guess, you know, internally. Um, so like, I mean, for our group, We've been growing a lot and, and hiring new people and you know they come from all different walks of life. 
their DJs, their engineers, their musicians. Yeah. So I think taking advantage of the huge pool of talent that is out there and, and sort of finding ways to integrate, integrate that into what we're doing and what our mission is to help uh, yeah. you know, Makes sense. rediscovery. My name is Matt. Uh, I lead a team that we call the Employee Experience and Development Team. So what do you think about the future of work? Well, I think that uh, the type of work that we're doing now is very different. And so sort of that means that all of the systems and tools and processes and everything that sort of surrounds the job mm -hmm. sort of has to change because we are people are um, knowledge workers now yeah. and that's very different than most of the systems that were created were created for uh, mechanical manufacturing environments yeah. and so I think that all of that has to change and so we spend a lot of time thinking about What's the best practice? What do we really like? Uh, what, what do we not like? And then what makes sense for Pandora? We've all worked at companies where nobody ever cared about our experience. Oh, totally. Right? They just wanted to pay us to get our jobs done. Yeah. So why is the experience so important now? Yeah. Um, first, a, a obviously competition, right? So we compete against really big companies with really you know deep pockets and sure. like you have to compete, right? Um, the second though is that I think uh, there's a realization that work doesn't have to be bad, yeah. right? Like, we're, what? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, work can be this really rewarding experience. And when you're doing work that requires your brain to work really hard and, and things like that, that we need to make that an engaging experience. Yeah. And so, um, for us, it produces a better culture. And we believe that, you know, culture is what has allowed us to persevere over 15 years. I spent the past few hours visiting the offices of Pandora in beautiful downtown Oakland, California, which is my home. I spoke with their chief human resource officer, some of their employees, and got a tour of their offices. It's really fascinating to see how they're building and how they're thinking about the future of work. And I can definitely say, after visiting Pandora, the future of work doesn't have to be like opening Pandora's box. Thanks for watching the Future of Work show. To sponsor an episode or to have your company featured in the show, email me jacob at thefutureorganization.com. I'll see you in the future.